All right, so this is philosophy and or standing up to bullies and funny stories. <laughs> so this is episode 89 of the podcast, and you actually missed a pretty good discussion about insecurities and gay bashing and hating what we can't express in ourselves. But we're not going to talk about any of that. <laughs> We've covered it. We solved it. You just missed it. <laughs> solved, solved it for humanity. And I'll never know. Well, so the discussion then veered towards are, are bullies insecure? And I don't think they are. I mean, well, like, I was, you're defining well there's all kinds of insecurities, right? right. There's, also, there's all kinds of bullies. But well, I don't think a bully is insecure about my ability to hit them because if they were, they wouldn't bully me. Well, that's the thing, right? Are they? Are, they're not worried about getting in fights, but they do tend to be predator and tend to choose the weaker prey at least at first. Right. Like they don't often bully the biggest guy in the class. Right. Those times the biggest guy in the class is in fact the bully. <laughs> so that's actually how I knew how fucking where I was in the food chain. Like, by who the, bullied you? <laughs> yeah, it's like the big, the big ones, the big like the, the, the fucking BMOC people. They left me the fuck alone. They didn't care because I wasn't, like, I wasn't a morsel enough for them. Uh, and it was the, it it's was like the, sharks don't fucking eat the mollusks. Right. They eat the squids. They eat the mollusks. The bullies that bullied me were always the ones that were like were kind of on the shit end of the stick themselves. Like they're really just desperate for a win. And those are the guys that picked on me. And usually what would happen is those guys would try to pick on me and then like the BMOCs would come by and go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's like, well, all right, that's how low I am in the food chain. <laughs> Even the BMOCs are like, well, come on. Was this in college or high school? This was in high school. I didn't get to, I, the bullying I got in college was weirder and dumber. I think I told this story already where uh, I was a music major my first year in uh, at Sac State and uh, one of the things you had a requirement for music majors to be in the marching band at least one semester which I was like bummed about because I thought getting out of high school was like I'll never have to march again so I didn't like marching band I, I was trying to be a jazz musician I was like just discovering classical saxophone music which is not a lot of I just didn't want to be in a marching band I didn't fucking make any bones about it I didn't think it was like it was something I had to lie about I'm like fucking I don't like football. I don't like the uniform. I don't like marching. I don't like the music. I don't like doing here. And, so what uh, happened in marching band? So, yeah, you know, I did. I did the stuff. I learned the parts. I did all the stuff. But I was. I was never like you know, yay team. I was like fucking hard. Right. And uh, so. Have you ever been yay team about anything? I don't know, Spence. <laughs> and uh, so, at one nothing point, about you <laughs> screams as free to core. <laughs> Like, I try to imagine what, where you found your kinship. Maybe, like, our, radio, our record shop was better than the other record shop. Oh, like, my, my record shop was pretty cool. Yeah, um, I would say, like, I can see your record shop. Like, if your record shop had to fucking do a gang fight against some other record shop, like, maybe that would have brought out, like, the team spirit in you. Well, we did hate the warehouse across the street. But anyway. Well, if I wouldn't have to the warehouse. That's, uh, that's, that's, not, that's, that's just <laughs> the, the soulless corporation. Well, I mean, I was, ours was a larger corporation we were working for. But, um... Corporate loyalty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, man, the coming Civil War is Verizon versus iPhone. <laughs> fucking, it's going to be, that's, that's going to be fucking half the country. West of the Mississippi is all iPhones. East of Mississippi is all Verizon. And they're all Verizon Standard Time versus, like, Apple Time. Currency won't be able to trade it back and forth. <laughs> anyway, so Thanks, marching band. So who fucking bullied you? So what happened was that I got called, like... You know, it was after marching man practice or whatever, and I was trying to try to go uh, do literally anything else. I don't really know. Um, and uh, some of the leaders of the marching band, they called me up, and like all the way up in his upstairs office above the fucking one of the band tech rooms, his little office, little star chamber thing. And they're all standing around, they're sitting behind a desk, and they make me sit down. And they're all kind of stern, going like, you know, you kind of act like you don't want to be here. And I was like, act! <laughs> you think this is a front? <laughs> like, uh, like, you know, uh, you know, you really should uh, yeah, try to participate more people more hard than like. So you guys have called me up here <laughs> to tell me that I don't like feel like belonging more. And the way you decided to solve that problem is this weird little star chamber where you all intimidate me into liking you. Why don't you just invite me bowling, you dicks? You ever think about that? Like, just fucking... Ask me out for drinks, but, like... 
fucking let's let's go play go miniature golf. Like what what am I supposed to do with this? Oh, I like you now. Now you fucking terrify and kind of make me laugh because how serious are you guys taking this? It's a fucking marching band. This this has to be explained. Uh, let me. Oh, where did you go? Um, oh. Wait, guys, it's yeah, the entrance. Jennifer, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> I may they have to edit this. Herds. They do move in herds. Oh, everybody does. Um, so the, you have to see for context that as as I crashed Ryan and Ryan was recounting rec 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 the story. He threw his like arms back. He's back in the moment. <laughs> Chest is out. It's and a slight that, exaggeration. I haven't picked my hand out of my pocket yet. Well, I, I don't know how it actually happened, but like when I was watching this, oh, your hands were back, man. You were like this, and I had my I had my hand in my pocket playing with these coins the entire time. Well, you, your your the elbows gestured, are back. I gestured with this hand, but anyway, so this is back. I might have saw the other hand. All right, so, the, and it was the most aggressive, ever, question of why don't you take me bowling. <laughs> well, like I'm just, I'm, I'm the, 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 the logic of the, the body weird. language is I'm gonna fucking kill you, and the words are Why don't you ask me bowling? <laughs> All right, I guess if that's what that's a weird read of it, but sure. That's a beautiful juxtaposition. That is the most aggressive. I think you're reading a lot of aggression into things. I think uh, you, you really want you. To... You didn't see you. This is your body language. All right. You had, I don't know what the other hand was. This hand was back. Why don't you take me bowling, you dicks? No, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that. I know what that is. I was there. Right. Like, maybe you don't know what you did. Maybe you were in the moment. I think that you really need me to be aggressive. I don't it, need you to be aggressive. It undermines a lot of what you've got going on. I, I don't know. I watch. This is you. You were super calm and mellow 95% of the time. Great. And then there's 5% of the time where you will fucking cut a bitch. I'm storytelling, man. You, I think you're reading you, a lot of You have this deep, you have this like deep little pocket where you will fucking go murder people. No. Yes. No, 100% zero. Oh, you see. It's, that's, that's kind of a bullshit. That's, I don't want to, I'm not going to sign off on that bullshit. I don't have to sign off on it. I'm telling you, okay, so that's, that's speculation. That's just, that's All I'm telling you that's is, no, I there, that. I will tell you that you are much more, there, there's elements you don't see. Where the fucking you connect the things. There's an element that you project onto me. I've no. never hit a person in my life. I'm saying but there's a mo that, that there's this when you tell a story, you get this point that triggers you, and suddenly you don't even realize the gestures and body language you're, you're exhibiting. Storytelling, man. You do act outs. You're a comedian for fuck's sake. I do too, but you're not aware of it. You're like, I didn't do that, and I'm like, I saw you fucking do that. <laughs> no. That's just you projecting, man. That's not. I saw it. You're telling me my. Like, what are you fucking a Republican? Who are you gonna believe? Me or your lying eyes? Oh, yeah. I was. You don't see you because you're inside. I'm here, I know what I saw. So you're saying that what you saw and what you interpreted what you saw is more valid no, than what's inside no, no, of me? No, 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 I'm saying what I saw is what I saw. My interpretation may or may not be more correct than your self-analysis. That's, I'm not saying it is, it's yeah, possible. You're seeing, you're seeing things through a lens that you have that interprets no, things a certain way. But, but, so sorry, if I just, like, move my hand a lot, that's not aggressively aggressive action. That's just no, it's, it's the, it was the, but I'm describing your body language. Right, and you're I saying that was not the body language you did. I was saying it was a, a, a. No, I'm not signing off on that bullshit. That's you. That's all you. That's you can. All you. That's all right. I don't care. I'm not. You don't have to. You don't, don't have to. I don't endorse that bullshit interpretation. Of like I'm, uh, but you frustration. But, like frustration is not a, necessarily a, a violent anger or outburst. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm saying the, I'm making fun of someone. The who's juxtaposition doing of the words and the body language was my point. Uh, wow, we got fucking far away. Okay. <laughs> that's um, on you. I'm not buying that. That's that's. You so okay. You've made it very clear. Although I might point out the lady does protest too much. As no, McDad. I just like this. You spent three minutes saying how I'm wrong. Yeah. If you if you don't endorse it, just say I don't endorse it. Move on. Well, because you keep trying to sell it. I'm saying no, I'm still I'm saying what I saw. Yeah. The, the problem became what, what he said. I didn't see what I saw. That was my my issue. You saw an arm waving and someone like expressing frustration, making fun of something. You're you're a comedian. You do act outs. Come on. I really don't. I really don't. Not, uh, I don't have enough body language in my comedy. But you, you understand the concept of act outs. No, I know. But yeah, but I'm saying I don't have enough body language in my comedy. That is a weakness my comedy has. Like, uh, had Patricia Mizzen on. 
Like she fucking like all levels, she's bending down, she's standing up. But you do understand the idea of exaggeration for comedic effect, right? I do. Okay. Why are you why are you so upset about this? Because it's a bull you're you're it's a bullshit accusation about like a, a part of my personality that just does not exist. It simply does not exist. And I don't want to fucking sign off on it and go like, ha ha, that's right, I guess I am secretly violent. I'm not. I didn't say you're violent. I don't I said... have these urges to kill or whatever. If I, if I say something loudly, that doesn't necessarily mean it's some sort of weird anger thing that I'm holding inside of myself. You're weirded out by the Zen thing and you keep trying to find holes in it, which is weird in itself. It's fine to every once in a while you like raise your voice, make a joke. Express frustration. It doesn't mean it's some sort of crack and like that. Like I have some secret built-up anger thing. Like if you have your anger things, have anger things, but don't let, let make other people have to carry it around too. I'm not trying to be carried around. It's sort of a. It's it's kind of a weird shaming thing that I just don't dig. Because now, what am I going to say? Like I, if I want to like. Do an exaggeration or raise my hand, or I go like, "Oh no, is he going to?" Why do you? Medicine? Why do you care what I think? Well, I mean, I'm having a conversation with you. Well, and you're putting it on tape, so like, I definitely feel like wanting to make sure I'm not signing off on that notion. You've made it clear you're not signing off on it. All right, we're moving on. Okay, so there was some weird Star Chamber bullshit, yeah. and they fucking tried to <laughs> intimidate you into being a good boy, right? And that didn't go over well. No. Oh. Um, I went and joined the jazz band and was perfectly happy. So that, were you still in the fucking um, marching yeah, band for the full semester? Yeah, I did the full semester the marching band. And you finished it out? Yeah. Was there any more Star Chamber visits? No. Because I made fun of them and then walked the fuck out of the dorm. <laughs> I was like, this is a dumb idea. I can't believe you thought this was the way to do this. See, I was in Naylor County Preparatory School for a year. And, uh, and one of the disagreements I had with the leadership amongst the many many disagreements was they're like we want you to buy in and I'm like no they go but you got punished and I'm like yeah I am more than happy to get the merits get the push-ups get the extra exercise <laughs> As, <laughs> you've already punished me here's the deal I did the thing you gave me the punishment we move on right. <laughs> there's there's no further but you're not changing your ways no I prefer to just keep being punished <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing the thing you keep doing the punishment, and we're good here. And th that mystified them. But you don't change. No, not going to. Move the fuck on. So from this, we go to your, well, not your hometown, but your neck of the woods, Petaluma, California. Oh, was it? I've never really lived in Petaluma. Yeah. No, neck of the woods. Yeah. Neck of the woods. Right, right. Um, driving distance to Sacramento. Right. Um, area. Yeah. So, um, we did actually drive to San Francisco, but anyway, um, I was going through Radio Man A School right after boot camp, it was Coast Guard. Right. So I was like all of about 18. And so Joey knew I was 17. And there was a dude who was about 24, 25, and everybody called him Zeus because he was six foot four and fucking had huge muscles, man. Just huge. And he would say things like, you know, I got in a big bar fight and the judge gave me a choice, join the army, join the military, or go to jail. And I chose the military. I can't believe that's a thing. It's a thing. And he goes, man, did I make the wrong choice? <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't want to paint with a broad brush. He was an okay dude for being fucking just Southern and fucking bigger than everybody else. Right. All right? And I had no sense of rhythm. <laughs> like, when they say, like, you need rhythm to play a musical instrument, and the first thing they do is how you count one, two, three, four in the same way every time. Right. I can't do that. Like, if I count one, two, three, four, it will be different than all times before and all times after. And if it does be the same, it will only be the same through coincidence. Huh. White man's disease, right? <laughs> I'm a jazz musician. Okay. No, obviously, it, it's called white voices. I didn't make them the name. Right. Obviously, there are white people with rhythm and white people without it. Although, you know, what the percentage might be that don't have versus have, I don't want to get into it. But clearly, it's it's a it's a it's anyway. So I was I'm, I'm at the far extreme of it. Right. I have no sense of rhythm. And marching, as you may have known, it's walking in rhythm. Right. So 
the aspect of bullying was this guy was behind me and he decides to step on the back of my shoes to teach me a lesson about make some fucking effort to march. Which, again, I don't think was the right thing to do, yeah. but, I, but he was somewhat provoked by the fact that I am the worst fucking marcher ever. Right. Like, clearly, I, I'm, I'm somewhat culpable. <laughs> and, and it is sometimes hard not to fucking step on someone's foot when you go right and they go left. Right. So, and now I was about five foot nine, cross country athlete, so about 120 pounds. Right. And I lost my temper. I turned around, I shoved him and said, you wanna fucking do this? <laughs> now it was broken up. Right. But I was like, I'll see you in the fucking barracks at 3 p.m. Now I said that. Right. Now, and in the and in the moment, I meant it. I was fucking red hot with anger. But like three o'clock high, have you seen the movie three o'clock high? Three o'clock yeah. high? Yeah. I now had to fucking live with the consequence. Oh, I was gonna see this dude at 3 p.m. and not no longer in temper, I had to go and fight this dude. And everyone's like, and so like just as and this is like at fucking A school, so like it's kind of like a high school mentality, although it's all adults, right? And I had friends, and they're like, "Are you gonna do this? Why don't you just fucking apologize and say I'm sorry?" And I'm like, "Not gonna happen." Like, but you're gonna fight him? Yeah, he's gonna fucking kill you. I don't care. But inside, I'm like fucking terrified because I gotta fucking fight this dude and it's not gonna go well. But I won't, I'm, just, I'm not trying to fucking be the hero of this story. I'm trying to say that like, I have a temper right. and in a temper, I'll fight fucking anybody because your reason's turned off. There's no fucking thinking involved. But now, now, with the, now actual, in the cold light of reason, my fucking anxiety and fear mechanisms are off the fucking charts. But my pride, which is outsized, is like not gonna fucking back down. So I show up and we and fucking we're in a fucking little barracks room, right? Which is like fits like two people. It's about the size of like a, you know a studio apartment. And there's like a bunk bed, and like three guys go up there and like sit in the bunk bed. We got an audience because I don't. I'm a weird dude, and they're like, we're gonna get to see the weird dude get his ass kicked. Because, you know, that that's appealing somehow. And admittedly, I'd probably watch that. I'd be rooting for the weird dude, but I'd watch it. And, uh, again, I'm trying to stress, the dude was not inherently a bad dude. So he goes in, and he knows he's fighting someone fucking, you know, half his size. So he lifts his fucking, and now, we don't want to get in trouble, so we agree to body punches only. And so he goes like this, I'm, I'm, in, a, in an audio mechanism, I'm explaining, he puts his hands up like this, right. and just lets me hit him for about fucking six, eight seconds. And then, and then at once, once, I've, once I've gotten some shots in, he then proceeds to hit me about twice in the body, and I go fucking down. <laughs> and I, I don't choose to go down, all right? He hits me harder than I fucking have ever been hit in the ribs. And he goes, are we done? And I go, I'm just getting started. Because now I'm in. I get up. Now I've got no fear. Right. I go in and the same fucking scene repeats itself about two more times. And now I can't get up or I don't want to get up. And I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> but, oh, and so I got my ass thoroughly kicked. And I'm telling you, this bully was not like weak. He wasn't afraid. <laughs> he was the strongest, toughest guy in our class and probably one of the strongest, toughest guys in Petaluma at that time. But, fuck me. Yeah. I achieved one small note of victory in that he ended up having to go to the fucking doctors and got diagnosed with a bruised rib and missed day classes. Why does it look like a clock? It was never meant to be a clock. Because um, you get people to look at it, so it's an advertisement. This is the first time I've ever looked at it. But it just it got you look at it now? Yeah, but it took like three years. Admittedly, they could have spared the expense and made a clock with a mustache. <laughs> so that is one of my bullying stories. One of my many, <laughs> many, many bullying stories. And I try to give fair context. Like this was not, th that some of this was brought upon myself. Right. 
but I did get a lot of respect from the people in my fucking class after that. Like, no one else tried to give me shit. So, they're like, that's the weird dude. Just leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it. Oh. Yeah, I have a feeling it's like 90% of the time where like bullying has become not a thing. It's just, it's not, it always just it doesn't become worth the effort. Well, <laughs> well, we were talking about that, and and uh, and that's where the start became. Is, um, is that I, I don't, I think people, some people have a violent need in them, right. and they gotta find acceptable targets. And it's just like predators, man, they gotta find the weakest in the herd. What's up, pup? And then some people, I think, like you said, are triggered by things that they want to do themselves and can't. Right. And, like, you even see that, like, with, you know, with parents. Like, their parents force them to play football, so they force their kids to play football. Right. Or, and even in professional sports. Like, these guys are all fucking millionaires and shit, right? Right. And they're all fucking alpha males. I hate that fucking expression. But they're all fucking athletes. They're all probably, you know, we're, like, the coolest guy in their school. Right. And then they make the rookies get treated like shit. Like, really, like they fucking have to fucking pay for meals when they're getting the least money. They got to fucking carry the bags to the people. That's because the apparently. That's that I don't fucking understand. Like, people, it's, this is common. It's not just football. It's not just jocks. It's, not, it's like, it's, it's across the realm. It's fucking it's in film and whatever else. Where people go like, well, it was shitty for me, so it's got to be shitty for everyone else. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's like, it's, but it, it's, it's that same thing. Like, parents are like, well, I had to do this when I was a kid, so I'm going to make you do it. Or I'm gonna. I got when I was a rookie. They made me do this. I'm gonna do it to you. Yeah. Why are you perpetuating something you don't believe in? Right. If you, you're acknowledging it's shitty, let's make it better. Like it doesn't have to be shitty. And let's I mean, find like other ways to do things, man. That's like literally how society has gone the entire time. Well, but well, some of it's like they don't know any other way to be. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I think like so. Like, take abusive parents, right? Right. And I'm not signing off on abusive parents, right? right. I think some fucking parents were abused and they grow up and they get fucking twisted and they want to hurt people and they hurt their kids. But I think some people that you imprint, you don't know any other way to be a parent except by fucking hitting your kids. And you have to break that fucking cycle. Um, And I think that's like a thing of like, you know, you, you might fucking never talk to your parents again, but then you're fucking being a parent and if you don't think about it, you copy the way your parents parented. Yeah. Or well, I mean, you can only there's only so much you can abstract, like the world. Like you definitely see the world through a, a, a lens that's informed by the by the things in your life, and therefore you interpret things through that lens. And I definitely see things through a lens that's informed by the way I've gone through my life. I definitely interpret things through that lens. But and you're aware level. of it, which helps. Yeah. Like you said, I'm in this lens, and I'm projecting, and I try and be aware of that too, and I think I am pretty self-aware, but lots of people I've met and dated have like zero self-awareness. And I try to explain to them, hey, look, have you thought about why you're doing this? (laughs) And they just look at me like, what do you mean? I want you to have broken eyeballs, it helps. Is that a metaphor or like literally like you had a broken eyeball at some point? (laughs) No, I just sort of exaggerate this notion. Like, I, I don't see this. I don't see the same world everyone does because these colors are different for me. So oh, your experience, color my experience is different. We were talking about that. That was like, yeah, it was like, uh, that would really be a problem for me. <laughs> to me, I don't even want glasses. I don't care. This is the, world, the world I see now is the world I've, saw, I've seen since I was a kid. I don't. I don't. Know, I, just don't even, I don't. But like, I have I have mixed feelings about therapy, right? Uh, because I don't know that any, any of the psychiatrists I met or psychologists are people I would trust to help me fix my life. Right. But if you're if you're broken and you know you're broken, then I'm like, go find a therapist because you gotta do something about it if you know it's a problem. If you know you're broken, the therapist gonna say you're broken. Like, ah, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm saying, like, if you, but, like, you've got an obligation to try things to try and fix it. Like, it's not enough to be like, well, I'm just this way. Like, okay, that's fine, but that's causing harm to people around you and repeatedly causing harm to yourself. you got to try some shit. It might not work, but, you know, you got to try. <laughs> like, 
I'm not saying anything's 100% guaranteed to work, but what the fuck are you doing? What other thing? What's your, what's your other alternative? Well, I'm cutting out red meat. No, that's not going to do it, man. <laughs> that's not how it's done. Um, and so, I mean, like, I'm pro-therapy, not as, like, a cure-all, but it's a start. It's something to try. And I think, like, even if it doesn't work, you learn something from how it doesn't work or why it didn't work if you put the effort in. So, yeah. But also, like, and that's the thing. Like, if you think critically, you can fucking test your own bullshit as well as other people's bullshit. Which brings me to my favorite fucking saw topic, why Republicans hate higher education. <laughs> we don't want no critical thinking skills. Okay. Teach the test. There's really no more negative power grab. Like, fuck education. Like, really? Wait, like, that's a... Just fucking, and millions of uneducated masses being like, fuck education. Fuck, fuck, we don't want to be educated. I like the, I like the new take. Like, oh, this fucking push for higher education is like a fuck you plumber. It's like, no, I want the plumber to have a degree too. I don't want the plumber to have to go into debt to get the degree, but like, I don't think that the plumber is hurt in life if he knows what Satra is or something, or is like been exposed to like critical thinking or other like because you have to do other shit than plumb <laughs> or you know pay a good wage so people would choose to be a plumber not don't have to right like why are you doing that well fucking because i'd rather do that than teach well like, plumbers you actually make very good money that's the point i got value system is severely fucked up well, I mean, like, I saw you like that post I had, which was like, you think people should be janitors, but you think that they should not be paid <laughs> enough money to live doing that. Right. Like, okay, well, what's your plan there? Right. That's some dumb shit. Every time I hear that, like, oh, fucking news, you get a better job. It's like, well, someone still has to do that job. I'm yeah. Just, whoever that is, let's pay that fucker. I don't care. Like, maybe you think that one guy is, like, undervaluing himself for getting a fucking burger from him. But someone's fucking flipping that burger. Let's fucking pay him. Well, I'm a big fan of the, the green wage or, or um, call it different things in places, but um, universal basic income. Right. Where this way, although like, you know, and you get that no matter what. You know, if you have a job, you still get the universal basic income, but you can get more than that. I mean. Well, I mean, eventually we have to come to the realization that we have long since been reached a point where we're just making shit up to, in order for them to justify their existence. We have done that before, but we're not doing that anymore. That's actually, like, that would be a solution, not a problem. Right. Like, and I've had this argument with some really smart people. I'm like, you realize mechanization means we're losing jobs. Right. And they're like, okay, well, mechanization also creates a job to program that, that, that robot. Okay, but that robot's doing the work of 100 people. How many people are programming that robot? One, two? Right. Well, and it's just, like I said, the reason I say we're making shit up for people to do is the jobs that, like... In order for me to be like valued as a human being in society, is I have to have a job. The job has to make me money. The money has to be something I can spend. So the job, the job I'm doing, I'm not helping humanity. <laughs> no, well, but, but like, that's the thing. Is like you are. Well, I've had different feelings, right? right? Like your job is supply and demand. Like if there were not people clicking on those videos, right? That y your your work is needed. There's a demand for your work. Right. Whereas, like, in the, the Coast Guard... If my, if my output wasn't tied to my, like, need for sustenance, my output would be so much more. But my output is tied to my need for sustenance because the only way I can justify existing in this fucking planet is to have a job that makes money. Not a job that means anything or does anything for this fucking planet. Just a job that does job. It makes other people move money around. But, like, my first four years in the, in the Coast Guard where you more or less got paid to exist. Right. You did a bad job badly, you did a job well, you got paid the same. And you you know, you worked three days, you worked eight days. Well, not really eight days, but you worked seven days a week. You got paid the same. Right. You worked 12 hours a day, you worked six hours a day, got paid the same. And like that, that's a weird kind of existence. Right. And the only way I can justify it is really we're getting paid to die. Like, the reason they're okay with having this huge, more people than they need to do the job, because 
there, there were times when I was underworked. I mean, overworked. Like, I was, like, on a small crew. But when I was on the chase, they didn't need me. I, I, I was not putting out the money that was going into my training. <laughs> and my utility was low. But I had a realization that the reason you have more people than you need is when people start dying in warfare, someone takes over. You need redundancy. Which is true. Like... Why do you have eight machine mates on a ship? Because four of them are going to die under enemy fire. Um, anyway, so I had a very negative experience with kind of government bureaucracy and socialism. And I became a very ardent capitalist. And I realized capitalism is just as fucked up. And given the choice, I'd rather a system that provides. <laughs> if we're going to have two fucked up systems, give me the system where people don't die from lack of health care. Right. Like literally, if I can have you on the call for Yeah, we're the U.S. is an embarrassment, and but we're, we're we're the result of propaganda. Like we're supposedly, I mean, explicitly like since Fox News, but honestly, we're the result of the fucking Red Scare in the 1950s. All right, and and now we're gonna fucking do some street crazy. <laughs>